Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my unboxing and first look at the Nikon Coolpix L27. I thought it would be really nice to bring you a look at some of the lower end cameras because not everyone can afford to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a compact camera. The L27 is a 16.1 megapixel camera, 5 times optical zoom, wide angle lens as well, also 2.7 inch screen and capable of capturing HD movies up to 720p. Little look at the packaging, got some details on the back here. Gives us a clue that it takes SDXC cards. It's also Mac and Windows compatible. Let's have a look, see what we get inside the box. So the first thing we've got is some warranty information. And then next down we have got a pack of goodies. Let's have a look, see what we've got in here. And we have got View NX2, Windows and Macintosh software. We've also got a quick start guide. And then further down in the box, we've also got a couple of AA batteries. So this doesn't take a lithium ion battery, purely AA batteries. You could replace these with rechargeables if you see the need to. Then we've also got a USB cable. This is mini USB, or actually it looks like a proprietary connection, but probably, no, that is mini USB to full size USB. Then we've got a little wrist strap. And then we have got the camera itself. Now this is available in various colors. And it's a very, very lightweight camera. This is a nice sort of burgundy color. You can see here the specifications again, 16.1 megapixels and a 2.7 inch LCD screen. Easy auto mode as well, got flash on the front. Top of the camera, we've got the on off button. We've also got the shutter button just here. And then that's uh, sort of shrouded by the uh, zoom lever, so wide angle to telephoto. And then on the back we've got that screen, 2.7 inch LCD screen. And then we've got some various controls here. We've got a direct record button for the movie mode. We've also got a scene button to switch scenes, a playback button, and then OK in the middle here for making menu selections. And then we've got flash control, exposure compensation, macro mode, and timer modes. And then down the bottom here we've got a menu button and the trash can. On the side here, this is the place where you're going to connect that wrist strap. And then on the bottom here, we have got an AV out USB connection, which is covered at the moment. Let's just remove that flap, that reveals the connection. And then just here, we have got the flap where you're going to place your memory card and also the batteries. And then just to the sort of left of the bottom of the camera, so offset from the center, we have got a plastic tripod mount. Around on this side, completely clear, apart from a uh, little speaker here, which you're going to use for reviewing back your video footage. So here we go, we're all powered on now, and we can give you a little look around the menu system. First of all, I just want to show you the scene button here. And here we can choose easy auto mode, which is what we're on at the moment. And then we can choose various scenes. So we're on portrait mode, but we've got sort of pet mode, sports, landscape, etc. We've also got a smart portrait mode, and then we've got an auto mode as well. If we go into the menu system, we can choose from image mode, which basically changes the amount of captured pixels. We've also got white balance, focus modes, and also color options. If we go down to the movie options, we can choose from VGA, 640x480, QVGA, or of course, uh, we can choose HD 720p. For some reason, I can't choose that at the moment, but I'll sort that out before I give you my full review. And then if we go across one more to the third menu, we've got the setup menu, and here we can change welcome scene, set the time and date, print date, motion detection settings, etc. Blink warning, video mode, i fi, so i fi is supported, and the battery type that we're using, and also firmware updates as well. So that gives you a little look around the sort of menu system. The screen looks pretty good, quite sort of impressed with the screen. It's uh, got some good color rendition on it. And overall, it feels like a nice little camera. This is obviously the lens at the front. Let's just have a look, see what it does when we zoom. So there's no change in overall physical length, really. Maybe a little bit of change at that longer end. But everything feels fine for this sort of camera. And I'm looking forward to just putting something through its paces like this to really give you an idea of what you can get for your money nowadays. In the full review that's coming up soon on the Geek Noise channel, we'll take a look at the photographic capability of this camera and also what the 720p video footage looks like. So thanks very much for watching. Please do give this video a thumbs up. Please do subscribe. 
and I will see you all in the next one.